Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all of you and welcome for a new Nexus Talk episode, the first automotive aftermarket podcast. I'm very delighted to welcome Gerson Prado and can you as well uh, introduce yourself for the people? Thank you, Andrea. It's a great pleasure to stay here with you and uh, talking a bit about our expectations and about Nexus and so on. First of all, introducing myself, I am uh, Gerard Comprado, I am Brazilian. I live in Sao Paulo city, which is the largest city in Brazil. We have around in the metro area about 22 million people something. And uh, I'm working in this industry in the last 35 years. And uh, now I have a seat in the board of Nexus Automotive International, which I am the president of the board. And then in SK Automotive, I am the CEO. Thank you so much, Gerson. Um, you know, it's such uh, important for us to be close to our community. Uh, and as you are indeed part of the board of director of Nexus and you have a great experience in this industry, Maybe can you share with us what is the situation on the Brazilian market first? Well, the Brazilian market in, in the auto part business is doing very well. Uh, in fact, uh, I've never seen in the past 35 years any crisis uh, regarding auto parts business. We are one of the important elements in the mobility system and uh, for this reason uh, we don't see any problem and uh, uh, in the past two years even with the covid times we had good results good sales and uh, our expectation for the next years are in the same direction and do you see that um, it is the same also for the entire uh, latin america it's the same, it's the same. When we see other countries in Latin America uh, talking with our members in those regions, uh, I can tell you that the same behavior, same, uh, same number, all of companies growing and the results in the same way, everything is, is doing very well. Not only Brazil, but for the rest of Latin America. Wow, impressive. And um, you know, indeed, um, it is sometimes important to say that uh, uh, there is dedicated trends. Maybe do you know if you have any trends that we can maybe highlight dedicated to Latin America? And then from your side, what are also the big trends all around the world in the automotive aftermarket for you? Well, uh, first, uh, back into the trends in, in the rest of the world. And afterwards, I'm going to uh, say about Latin America and especially for Brazil. Uh, for the, the majority of the parts of the world, I mean Europe, Asia, uh, North America, what we can see is um, a revolution of electrical vehicle. This is one thing that no one can stop because we can uh, see every car maker planning for the next five to ten years lots of uh, new models of electrical vehicle uh, especially in europe and in asia and uh, this is a, a, a big um, uh, disruption because in the past a hundred years with an ICE uh and then now moving to electrical vehicle is a big disruption not only because of the source of energy but that in this new concept of cars we are gonna have lots of technology i can tell you that our cars will be in technology way close to smartphones it means for the new generation and uh, that they will find a very big tech car in the roads in the next years combined with a lot of regulations um, for example in europe 
uh, starting from 2030, no uh, countries will be allowed to produce IC cars anymore. Just uh, renew renewable um, uh, source of energy. Back into our region, uh, Latin America, specifically Brazil, uh, for sure we are going to have electric cars on here, but not in the same size we can see in Europe, Asia, or, or, or USA, or even the whole uh, North America. Why? Because in Brazil, we since the beginning of 80s, we have ethanol, which is a very, very sustainable uh, uh, energy for cars. We have a very big park of cars produced in Brazil with a thirst we call a flex fuel. They can use gasoline, they can use ethanol, but in fact, the majority of the cars are using ethanol. Uh, just for you uh, 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 understand better, a car with ethanol produces less, 70% less CO2 uh, when we compare to a gasoline car. In the next uh, years, we are gonna have a new uh, regulation called ethanol 2, which will produce 90% less CO2 when we compare to a um, gasoline car. For this reason, I believe uh, Brazil will postpone the EV cars for a, a, a big period. Uh, another uh, example is uh, Volkswagen elected Brazil for the global center for uh, flex fuel in the world, uh, servicing other countries like uh, India or African uh, countries, um, which means, okay, we are gonna have EV here, but it's a very small proportion when compared to Europe or, or Asia or North America. And, and for sure, and for sure, Brazil will, is going to be a, a platform to export those uh, flex fuel cars to other countries in Latin America too. Well, thank you, Gerson. Indeed, we see that uh, there is a kind of uh, difference, as you said, between indeed the Europe who will focus uh, entirely on EV vehicles, where here, uh, let's say in, in Brazil, there is still a belief in a, a new uh, fuel technology. So it's very interesting. And what, in that case, you think that Nexus can support you in, in that case? Do you feel that Nexus is supporting you as a member in your region to anticipate this transition of the industry? Uh, for sure, for sure. Uh, since we are part of the Nexus community, we have uh, lots of uh, trends uh, coming from Nexus uh, community. Uh, we, we learn every day and uh, w how this uh, industry, auto parts industry goes in every part of the globe and we can adapt uh, solutions uh, locally in Brazil. We also have uh, a big uh, structure in, in Brazil and Argentina with local offices. Uh, one in Sao Paulo and another in Sao Paulo in Brazil and another one in Buenos Aires. Uh, Argentina to support in the whole uh, community. Let's now focus on another tema, if I can say, another topic. Um, I think that everybody is aware about the climate change, uh, the fact that uh, we have to act as a citizen of the world, right? Um, do you feel or, yes, do you feel that sustainability today is also a priority uh, in your region? in Latin America, uh, let's say, but also indeed then in Brazil? Well, uh, it, it's, uh, this uh, sustainability topic is a key role in Brazil in the past 30 years or more. Just for you uh, think about it, an example is when we talk about sources of electricity in Brazil, 64 are coming for hydroelectric, which is 100% uh, green. 
about 8.4% is biofuel. Uh, biofuel burns 80% less CO2 compared to oil uh, sources. We also have 80.6, around 80.6 about windy, 1% solar, 9.3% uh, natural gas, which is also 80% less uh, CO2 when we compare to gasoline or diesel, and uh, just 2% nuclear and 1% oil. It means uh, the sources of energy in Brazil is by far very, very sustainable. Maybe we are one of the best countries in the globe uh, generating electricity from uh, sustainable sources. Another important thing about Brazil is uh, when we have the, the, the total size of the land, 23% uh, is a conservation area, it means forest. 16% indigenous area and just 20% agro and 16% other areas, uh, it means cities. Uh, uh, say that about 40% of Brazil, when we combine conservation area and indigenous areas, nobody touches. It means we are pro-environment uh, uh, country. Uh, as I was mentioned before, just uh, uh, again to, to support the whole thing, our cars uh, are the cars currently that we are using ethanol everywhere. The majority of the fleet of Brazil are flex fuel. Uh, it means people are using more ethanol than gasoline, uh, producing less 73% of CO2 compared to gasoline. And very soon with ethanol 2, we are going to produce 90% CO2 uh, compared to gasoline uh, uh, cars. Well, I was not indeed expecting that indeed Brazil was so active in sustainability. So, wow, and thank you for, for this feedback. And let's now also focus indeed from, from your side, you know, as a, a big organization. How do you manage the sustainability today at SK, for example? In our, in our case, we are very fo focused on uh, sustainable things in lots of different areas in the company. We have uh, huge KPIs uh, in every area uh, to be sustainable. One example is for uh, our uh, delivery cars. Um, all of them uses uh, sustainable fuel like ethanol. And uh, we have some solar uh, energy uh, in some places and we also uh, provoke to every uh, uh, employee to think about sustainable things every time. Yes and thank you so much for all this explanation uh, for this insight and very useful uh, information about your region um, and thank you very much for your time for having been with us today Gerson so I think we can say bye to, to everybody. Thank you very much for these opportunities. Thank you. Very, uh, and uh, we, we can see you uh, very soon. Thank you. Thank you very much to everybody. And indeed, talk to you soon. Bye bye.